So now let's talk about polygons. So what are polygons? Polygons are plane figures with straight lines. So a plane figure refers to one in which you have that is enclosed with lines. So for a shape to be enclosed with lines, you have to have at least three sides. And the smallest polygon you have is a triangle in which you have three straight lines being enclosed together like this. So you can say in other words that polygons are plain figures with three sides and above. So when it has three sides, we refer to it as a triangle. If it has four sides, we call it a quadrilateral. If it has five sides, we call it a pentagon, six sides, hexagon, seven heptagon, eight sides, octagon, nine sides, nonagon, and ten sides, decagon. So let's start out by looking at triangles. So a triangle is a three-sided figure with three angles that sum up to 180 degrees. So this is the most important property of a triangle. The fact that the angles of a triangle sum up to 180 degrees, and you have to know this. So the angle of A plus the angle of B plus the angle of C is equal to 180 degrees. So let's say, for instance, I have a triangle in which I'm told that this angle is 60 degrees and I'm told that this angle is 20 degrees and I'm asked to find this angle. So I know that the sum of the three angles must be equal to 180. So x plus 60 plus 20 must be equal to 180 degrees. So I know that x plus 80 must be equal to 180. So x is equal to 180 minus 80 and that is equal to 100 degrees. So this angle was equal to 100 degrees. So to recap, the sum of all angles in a triangle was equal to 180 degrees. So now let's talk about the types of triangles. So we can classify triangles either by the properties of their sides or by the properties of their angles. So if I'm going to classify triangles based on their sides, a triangle in which all the three sides are equal is referred to as an equilateral triangle. So the sides of all the triangles are equal. And therefore, the angles will invariably be equal. So here we have an isosceles triangle, and this is one in which only two sides are equal. So if I have two sides being equal, then this angle will be equal to this angle over here. And finally, we have a scalene triangle in which no side is equal, and invariably no angle is also equal. If I characterize triangles by angles, then we we'll have an acute triangle. And this is one in which all three of the angles are less than 90 degrees. So all of the angles individually are less than 90 degrees. A right triangle is one in which one of the angles is 90 degrees. So you have one triangle, and that angle is called the right angle. So a right triangle is a triangle with a right angle, an angle of 90 degrees. One obtuse triangle is one in which one of the angles is greater than 90 degrees. So as you can see, this angle over here is greater than 90 degrees. So we we'll call this an obtuse triangle. So let's try. Now let's talk about congruent triangles. Two triangles are congruent if they have exactly the same three sides and three angles. So if we see two triangles, like in this, we have triangle what? This is triangle ABC, and this is triangle EDF. So as you can see, they both have three sides, and you can see this side here is equal to this side here, this side here is equal to this side here, and this side AC is equal to side DF. And the way I know is by the mark. So when you see these symbols being equal or being the same on two lines, it means that they are the same. Similarly, the angle here is equal to the angle here, the angle here is equal to the angle here, and the angle here is equal to the angle here. So it means that these two triangles are equal, and the way we see it is that these two triangles are congruent. Now let's try to solve some examples. So first, now we are told to find the angle marked question mark. So we are given a triangle, we are told to find the angle. So we know that the sum of angle in a triangle must be equal to 180. So let me call this my unknown portion y. And let me call it x. So know that the sum of 77 y and x must be equal to 180 degrees because this is a triangle. But now, this base over here, the line is extending. I have a straight line. 
at the angle of a straight line, we know is 180 degree. So this angle over here must be equal to 180 degrees. So I know that angle X plus 124 must be equal to 180 degrees because this is angle on a straight line. So X will be equal to 180 minus 124, and that is equal to 56 degrees. So I know that X now is what 56 degrees. So now I can find the value of Y because I know that the sum of angle in a triangle will be equal to 180. So I know that 77 plus Y plus 56 will be equal to 180 degrees. So I know that my Y will be equal to 180 minus 77 and minus 56. And that gives me 47. So the angle of Y or this place mark question mark, this angle here is 47 degrees. So now let's look at another example. So here yeah, I'm told to find the values of X and Y. So as I can see, that here is a straight line. So I can calculate the angle over here. So I can call this A. So it is a straight line. I know that the angle on the straight line is 180. So I can write that A plus 120 must be equal to 180 degrees. So that my A will be equal to 180 minus 120. And that is equal to 60 degrees. So know that my angle A is what 60 degrees. But as it's indicated here, you can see that this line over here is the same length as this line over here. So this is an isosceles triangle because we have two sides that are equal. And when two sides of a triangle are equal, then the angle at the base of those two lines must also be equal. So what does it mean? It means that y must be equal to the angle over here. So y will be equal to what 60 degrees or so. So y will be equal to 60 degrees. And we know that the sum of angle in a triangle must be equal to 180. So we know that x plus 60 plus 60 must be equal to 180 degrees. We know that x must be equal to 180 minus 120. And that gives me 60 degrees. So the angle here is what 60 degrees. And since the angle are all equal in this triangle, it means that this is an equilateral triangle. So let's talk about quadrilaterals now. So these are four-sided plane figures. And the important properties of quadrilaterals is that the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. So we have several types of quadrilaterals. First, we have a rectangle. And in a rectangle, all the angles in the rectangle, the interior angles are 90 degrees. I will have the two opposite sides being equal. So this length over here is equal to this length over here. And this length over here is equal to this length over here. In a square, each of the interior angle is 90 degrees. And the length of all the sides are equal. So all angles are 90 degrees and all sides are equal. In the rhombus, all the sides are equal and the opposite sides are parallel. So as you can see, all the lengths here are equal. But this line here is parallel to this line. And this line over here is parallel to this line. In a parallelogram, the opposite, we have opposite sides that are parallel and equal. So these sides are parallel and they are equal. These sides are parallel and they are equal. So it's referred to as a parallelogram. In a trapezoid, two sides are parallel. So we just have only two parallel sides. And in a kite, the adjacent pairs of sides are equal. So this length over here is the same as this length over here. Why the length of this line here is same as the length of this line here. So now let's consider some of the general properties of polygons in general. So the first part is that the sum of interior angle is given as 180 into bracket n minus 2, where n is the number of sides. If you recall, we said that the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So now let's use this formula to see if we get that. So here, what about the sum of the angles should be equal to what? 180 into bracket n minus 2. The number of sides in a triangle is 3. So we just have n as 3, 3 minus 1, and that gives me what? 3 minus 2, and that gives me what? 180 times 1, which is equal to 180 degree. So this defines that the sum of angles in a triangle should be equal to 180 degree. What about a quadrilateral in which you have four sides? So the sum will be equal to 180 into bracket. The number of sides here is 4 minus 2. And that is what 118 by 2, which gives me 360. And as we said before, the sum of angles in a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. 
So in general, to find the sum of the interior angle, and by interior angle, I mean the angles that are inside like this. Find the sum of the angles. So the sum of angles, now the sum of the angles over here. So what we do is we look at the number of sides that the shape has. So yeah, we have about one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six shape figure. So the sum of all the interior angles will be equal to 180. Value of L is in this case is six because we have six sides minus two. And that be what 180 times four. And what does that give us? That gives us 720 degree. So the sum of angles, interior angles in this shape, which is an hex, hexagon, is 720 degrees. So the second part we look at is the sum of the exterior angles. So in any given polygon, the sum of the exterior angle is always 360 degree. And you have to commit this to memory. The sum of the interior angle is given as 180 to bracket n minus 2, while the sum of the exterior angle is always 360 degrees. So here, 1, 2, and 3 represents the exterior angle in this triangle. So angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 360 degrees. In this case, this angle over here plus this angle over here plus this angle over here, plus this angle over here, which is the exterior angles, sum up to 360 degrees. And the same way, in this case, angle 1, which is the exterior angle over there, plus angle 2, plus angle 3, plus angle 4, and plus angle 5, is equal to 360 degrees. So now let's look at some examples. So in this first example, I'm asked to find the value of x. So the first thing I want to do now is to find the sum of all the angles in this shape. And what shape is this? We have six sides. So this is an hexagon. So first, we need to calculate the sum of angles in an hexagon. And we know that the sum will be given as what? 180 to bracket n minus 2. And here I have six sides. So that will be 180 into bracket 6 minus 2, which is equal to 180 times 4, which is equal to 720 degrees. So the sum of all the interior angles here must be equal to 720 degrees. So now I can write that out as what? 120 plus 6x plus 8x minus 8 plus 7x plus 14 plus 4x plus 14 plus 5x minus 6 must be equal to 720 degrees. So when I call it like that, I have... 120 minus 8 plus 14 and minus 6 and that gives me 120. I have 6x plus 8x which gives me 14x. Then 14x plus 7x gives me 21x and 21x plus 4x gives me 25x. 25x plus 5x gives me 30x. So plus 30x equals to what 720 so 30x is equals to 720 minus 120 so i know that 30x is equals to 600 so if i double side by 30 i have my value of x being equals to what 20 so the value of this x in this case is 20 degrees in this second example, we are told to find the value of x also, and x is this angle over here. So the first thing we want to do is, we want to find the angle over here, because you know when we find the angle over here, the sum of angle on a straight line will be equal to 120 degree. So let's call this angle over here y. Now, we know that we can calculate the sum of angle in this shape, and this shape is a five-sided polygon, so this is a pentagon. So the sum of angles will be equal to what? 180 into bracket n minus 2. And in this case, 180 into bracket 5 minus 2, which is 180 times 3. And that is equal to what? 540 degrees. So once I've gotten that, I know that the sum of all the angles here must be equal to 540 degrees. So I know that 90 plus 120 plus 100 plus angle y plus 108 must be equal to 540 degrees. So this is what y 
then this plus this plus this plus this gives me 418 must be equal to 540. I know that my angle y must be equal to 540 minus 418, and that is 122 degrees. I know that angle y is what 122 degree. Now I know that angle on a straight line is 180 degree. So angle x plus 122 must be equal to 180. So I know that x plus 122 must be equal to 180. So my angle x is equal to 180 minus 122 degrees and that is equal to what 58 degrees so the value of x is 58 degrees now let's look at the last example that i'll be looking at so here we are told to find the value of x and as you can see x here is an exterior angle now we've discussed before that the sum of exterior angle in the polygon is always equals to 360 degrees so we can write out or the exterior angle so here we have 60 degree and the next exterior angle over here we have 90 degrees this is the symbol for 90 degrees here we have 70 degrees here we have x and finally here we have 90 degrees so the sum of all those angles must be equal to 360 degrees so when we add 60 plus 90 plus 70 plus 90, that gives us 310 plus x must be equal to 360 degrees. So x is equal to 360 minus 310, and that gives us 50 degrees. So the value of x is what? 50 degrees. So that pretty much sums up our discussion on polygons.